Hey, Mark Warnke here. Um, so I wanted to share with you guys, and you know, I'm known as the GOAT guy, and I'm the founder of the homesteading movement and packgoats.com, and, and just know that anything you need to help to learn to raise goats, or if you want helpful hints on, on pack goating or, or pack goats or goats in general, it can all be found on packgoats.com. Courses, there's a membership, there's discounts, there's gear, there's everything that you would need to, for that world. But I'm here to help you today to kind of understand like goat weights. Um, almost, almost always when people, and I, I am in the business of asking people, well, how much does your goat weigh? They give me a number. And then I say, well, is that because you've, you've scaled him? He's been on a scale? No, it's okay, is that a guess? No, I taped him. Well, tape, so you know, are almost always low. Um, so, uh, or excuse me, high. Um, so if somebody tells you they're 150 pounds and they taped them, almost always in weathers, um, that's usually about 20 pounds or 10% too much. 10 to 15% over their actual weight is what the tapes seem to be in. I find them to be pretty inaccurate. Um, you know, they're called weight tapes. Or you um, uh, have people that are just guessing. And guessing, they always guess high. They always think their goat weighs more than it does. And then the other part is a true scale. And a true scale is the best way to do it. Um, I know they make some cheap kind of big platform ones on Amazon that are around 100 bucks. I think that's the cheapest way to go. And I've heard mixed reviews on those. And then there's the full on like vet scales like I have. And these are like 400 bucks. They're, they're not cheap. Um, they come with a digital readout, a little screen. You can zero them. They, they're accurate. Um, and I weigh all my goats and everything on the, the veterinary scale, but I have a large enough operation where spending 400 bucks on a scale makes sense. I also dictate the weights, and I wanna go out and show you, um, the reason to have weights, by the way, is to know how much medication to give, um, how much wormer to give, the progress of your goat, the health in general of your goat. Sometimes you're surprised that some goats have lost weight. Some of them have gotten really fat. Um, one of the ways to do that is the scale. If you don't have a good tool, then it's really difficult to measure. So now that I've showed you kind of the scale, I'm going to show you kind of the goats and talk about weights in general and how that relates directly to pack goats and you know what we're looking for in efficiency. And we're going to take the book out and I'll talk to you about the different goats. All right, so now that we're out here in the goat pen, I wanna walk through some of the weathers first and I'll talk about just a couple of the does. But I wanna talk about weights and kind of, you know, the surprises. I always, when I weigh boys, is when I get a, an accurate look. Um, since Preacher stepped up here first, we'll talk about Preacher. Preacher comes out of Dingle. Dingle produced profit. So we have three generations of fathers and sons here that are really exceptional goats. And Preacher, by the way, so you know, is... Um, he is a year and a half, so he's last year's buckling. So at a year and a half, Preacher um, is 154 pounds. Um, he's built really right. He's a little pot-bellied right now because he's full. They just had their morning feed. So I'm really happy with how he's built. His confirmation is excellent. His back is flat. Nor normally, he's not this kind of paunch-bellied, so I really like his formation. Right now, if I looked at him all full like that, I'd be like, eh, I wish his rumen was a little smaller. But he really is a, a well-built goat, and at 154 pounds at a year and a half old, this goat's going to, in my opinion, like usually at about, at about uh, a year... I like to say at a year old, they're at about 60% of their body mass. And so at a year and a half, with him being already at 154, I'm guessing he's going to finish in the 200 to 220 range. That's my guess. We'll see. Maybe we can refer back to this video later. Um, this is Dingle. Dingle is my lightest two-year-old. He's two and a half because we're in October, so everybody was born in the spring. And Dingle has really... Just beautiful confirmation. Flat back, he's thin, he's, he's, he's a skinny goat. You can see he's got some hips showing. That's how I like him built. He's built, he's got slight, slight toe out in the back end. He's tall, I mean, he's got more body than leg. But this goat, by comparison, Dingle is built exactly like I want him. And so he's built really well, but Dingle only weighs 178, I believe it is. So let me verify that. Dingle's 177. So he's 177 when I put him on the scale last, and he's exactly what I'm looking for. Now he's taller than, let's go over to his two same age um, relatives. So if we go over to his same age 
kind of buckling mates, dingle is the same as blade. Now blade, remember, is progeny that's out of the same genetics that slick is. Slick is five, blade is two and a half. You can see blade is already bigger than slick. I actually think that was groceries. I didn't think, I don't think he got his, I didn't own him till he was two. I don't think he got the feed he needed as a kid to, to grow to ultimate size. But this guy did, and I raised him right, and he's already 205 as a, as a two and a half year old. So 205, by the way, compared to Dingle, who's, I think Dingle's almost as tall. Let me see if I can get him to mix in here. Come here, bud, it's okay. I know, it's okay, come here. So yeah, look at that. They're, they're almost exactly the same size, but it is freaking amazing that this goat is 177 and that one's 205. You can see he's a little bit longer and he's a little bit heavier boned. And, and I'm not saying I like this goat more than that goat, but you gotta remember, this goat is literally carrying almost 30 pounds less in his body than this goat is. So my guess is he's going to be better on an endurance level. And that has been my experience as well. These goats that are thin and, and nimble have better endurance overall. And uh, it really, really pays off. But I'm just blown away that this La Mancha that's related directly to Slick, who Slick, by the way, just to give you an idea, is 191. So he's 191 as a five-year-old. This one's 205 as a two and a half year old. He's gonna finish out in the 230s, probably maybe even 240s. So this is gonna be a really big heavy hitting goat, but look at his formation. I mean, he's thin, he's flat backed, he's super leggy, he's not overly deep, he's not overly wide. I mean, that is a packing machine right there. And so, so now we'll pull out the antithesis of that, which is Noah. So Noah is how we used to think we needed to breed pack goats, mixing in meat and that sort of thing and thinking that that gave us musculature and that's good thinking, but it brings inefficiency. Now Noah is an A-teamer all the way. He runs my A-team, he's awesome but he's always got his tongue out and he's always struggles with the end of the day. Those long endurance stuff, he just doesn't have it because he is, by the way, uh, Noah, when I weighed him, weighed 250. So up Noah, up, good boy. So you can see Noah, and by the way, he's in kick-ass trail shape. We just got done with elk season. He's had about over 100 miles on him this year. He's finally lost his blubber, his extra fat that you could sink your fingers into. At, he was probably 265 at the beginning of the year because he was so fat. And he had to lose 15 pounds where these guys barely lost any because they were already thin. So Noah's awesome, don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking him down, um, but he's not what we're breeding for. He's not what we're looking for because he's inefficient. Um, he overcomes it with heart, which I wish I could breed more of. It's really difficult to breed heart into a goat, but we do know we get it out of some lines. Um, but in terms of what we're looking for, we're looking for these guys. We're looking for 205, you know, 38 inches, 39 inches tall, two and a half year old. I mean, this is an up and comer. This is one of the best goats I have. He outwalks everybody out there at 191. This is Solo, so this is girlfriend's son. He's a three quarter Alpine, one eighth Boer, one eighth Sonnen. And he's what I call a square goat. So he's very square in his configuration. He's not super tall, he's a little over deep. He doesn't quite have the horn configuration that we're looking for, but he's 197. Now he's gonna be a good packer all day. I think he's gonna do great. I'm happy to have him. I think he's gonna be an A-teamer. He's just not the elite of what we're shooting for. But this is again, another two and a half year old that's 198. So he's gonna finish out in the 230s, 240s. Now here's where the surprise came in. I did not anticipate this at all. The heaviest, one of the heaviest goats we had out here this year, let me pull him up, was Timber. So at 253, Timber, he's freaking huge. Now, where does he get that hugeness? Um, and I'll show you where he gets it. And it's in, hey, come here, come here, come here. 
I've been messing with him today, and so he knows I'm trying to grab him. Um, it's okay, buddy. It's okay. So at 253, what, what happens is that he's so long, and he's also just a big goat. He's really tall, but he has like from here to here is extra length. So if you take that kind of in a, in a circular pattern, that's 30 pounds of flesh guaranteed. So he goes from 250 to 220 without this really long body. And so Timber is a, a good packer, but I am beginning to notice how now that he's getting age and aging, he's starting to slow more than he should. So I know that when we have inefficient bodies, we end up having less longevity, less endurance, and if we're breeding for packers, we really want to do that. And a goat like this, um, now Timber does good, but again, he, he can be slow. So these people who are breeding for these really upper end goats, I, I don't think that's the right mix. I just don't. I think this goat right here, um, General, he weighs in the high 190s, I believe it is. Let me see. General, yeah, 197. So, and he's three and a half, so he's not still fully grown. He's gonna fill out a little more. He'll finish out in the 210s, just exactly what I like. Um, in some of the um, Buster, Buster is one of my goats that I wish could be a little bit faster, and he's another heavyweight. He's 230. So uh, I find, and then Jon Snow, he's, look at how similar he is in formation to him, and Jon surprised me. Jon weighs 233. So, you know, a lot of these goats are very muscular this time of year. So we put a lot of muscle on them because then they're in the packing, but nobody's fat. These are all in condition weights. The only ones that you could kind of say aren't in shape are my juveniles, which would be accurate, um, but they're still in the process of growing. Wolf over here, by the way, is also a yearling, same age as Scout. Scout, who's just like my shadow, huh, Scout. He's 157. And Wolf, who's super cool, I'm pretty excited about him, is 143. That surprises me. Wolf just looks bigger. Um, but Wolf, Wolf's a really neat one. Come on, Wolfie, go that way. Go that way. Good boy. But Wolf's girlfriend's, girlfriend's son's from last year, and this is Blade's baby. So another, another goat out of that La Mancha genetics, you can see the elf ears. So I'm really excited about how he is. And so that's an example, by the way, where I took girlfriend, who's a big fat tubelard, also a descendant, I believe of Noah. Now I may be wrong on that, but similar genetics to that. Only one quarter that though. Um, and I took that tubelard and I bred him with that blade, who's really tall, leggy, all that stuff, and ended up with a goat that's a lot more streamlined like what we're looking for. So I kind of wanted to use weights to show you examples. Um, I, if you notice, my one and a half year olds in the fall, they're all kind of in the 150s. Um, my two and a half year olds are all in the high 185s, 180s to 205s. And then my three and a half year olds, they really don't get that much bigger after that, but they do. Um, so you're gonna add another 10 to 20 pounds in that three year old year going into four, and usually four, they're full grown. One last goat I see over here that I wanna check weight on and remind myself of is Sergeant. Sergeant's 185, which is crazy. I cannot believe Sergeant weighs less than General. But again, if you look at General, he's a longer goat. So he's got the length again, which adds body. This goat is built better for performance in the way I like to breed in Sargent, and he weighs less than General. He's taller than General, um, he's leggier than General, um, but he weighs a fair amount less, 12 pounds less. Hey, 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 sheesh. So anyway, uh, I hope you find that helpful. Remember that by weighing your goats, you also, and one, one more thing over here, so here's Mercy. So you know, Mercy is getting old and Merciless is having a problem with his teeth. He really just doesn't have any teeth left in his head. You can see he has two left. Um, so he's not able to chew his cud. So you can see his back line, his spine is tall. Come here, Merce, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, hey, hey, it's okay. I just, I just put them all through the vet ringer. That's why everybody's kind of cautious of me. I put them on the stand. I did the herd wellness check. I gave them shots. 
So everybody's kind of thinking I'm here as the vet right now. It's okay, Mercy. Good boy. Um, so Mercy's ribs are showing, his back line showing, his hips showing. The problem is his teeth. He's nine years old. He's getting old. I'm going, I'm ordering a pelletized feed right now that's balanced for urinary calculi. So it's a, it's a balanced for phosphorus and calcium. And I'm going to feed him a mash basically because I love him. He's going to be the only goat that I'm probably ever going to do this for. Um, I'm going to keep him alive um, just into his age because he's just an iconic, beautiful, amazing goat. And I'm going to try to give him a, at least another year, if not two years of life by feeding him special feed. The mash is going to be a pelletized feed that I put in water and let him eat. And hopefully he eats it well. And it'll help him with the fact that he just doesn't have the teeth to chew his cud anymore. Because like all animals like this, he's, it's going to be his teeth that kills him. He just can't get the nutrition out of his food. So anyway, um, and by the way, normally he's in the 220s. Uh, and he's now in the two, he's 205. So he's lost a lot of weight. We know that because we put him on the scale. And he looks then. He actually looks better than he did about a month ago. We've gotten him fattened up a little bit already. Um, but yeah, we, uh, yeah, he doesn't have super long left. Um, but what a neat goat he's been, huh, buddy? It's a good boy. It's a good boy. All right. So I hope you find that helpful. Mark Warnke, um, the goat guy, signing out. <laughs>